Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, the liquor shields, desolations, peasants, vassals, minions, chiladas. I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. And uh, today I want to talk about ISIS or the Islamic State. And uh, I guess we can just keep calling him ISIS because it's kind of like Prince. Uh, Prince can change his name as many times as he wants, but everybody's still going to call him Prince. And uh, the Islamic State can, can change their name to whatever they want, and they'll probably still be ISIS. But uh, anyway, the Islamic State uh, now stretches across Iraq and Syria in this new caliphate. And uh, there's been a lot of figures thrown around about how many they are. So I wanted to just kind of take a closer look at what information is available, which is very little, and try and figure this out. Because initially, the United States seemed to indicate that there was up to five to 10,000 uh, ISIS Islamic State fighters uh, in Iraq. And uh, we now have the Islamic State claiming they have 30,000 just in Iraq. And uh, you would think that the, the United States would exaggerate, uh, particularly for uh, political uh, purposes, and now, of course, this warmongering purpose uh, for fear uh, to, to uh, inflate the numbers. So the fact that the United States said uh, a few months ago that there was 10,000 uh, uh, Islamic State fighters in Iraq uh, seems rather perplexing. Although, once again, that was several months ago. Uh, when they weren't necessarily discussing uh, imminent intervention, and now they are. So I'm sure they would be more than happy to revise the numbers now. Uh, where it gets interesting is uh, Wikipedia uh, now claims that there's somewhere between 80 and 100,000 uh, Islamic State fighters. And uh, so this is a number that's getting thrown around now. And uh, it showed up again uh, last uh, August in an article claiming uh, that a uh, Syrian uh, watch group uh, that's based out of uh, London, but has had some reliable figures, is suggesting that 50,000 uh, Islamic State fighters are in Syria, and that includes 20,000 non-Syrian uh, foreign fighters. And uh, so you put that 50,000 together with the 30,000 uh, that are in Iraq, and uh, you come up with 80,000. So 80 to 100,000 doesn't seem uh, like too much of a stretch based on uh, the, these numbers that are thrown around in these articles. Uh, the Islamic State themselves uh, back the figure of 50,000 fighters in Syria, as well as stating they have another 30,000 in Iraq. But once again, uh, for propaganda purposes, it's certainly in, uh, in ISIS or the Islamic State's uh, interest uh, to overstate how many fighters they have. So the truth probably lies somewhere in between. Uh, we also have the Iraqi government uh, figures who suggest that uh, ISIS or the Islamic State have a total of 100,000 fighters. But once again, it's in their best interest to uh, inflate the figures because they are fighting against uh, ISIS or the Islamic State and uh, are actually losing. So they want to exaggerate the strength of uh, the uh, Islamic State uh, uh, forces. Then we have Israel. Uh, I found an article where Israel put the number of uh, so-called Al-Qaeda in Iraq and Syria at 50,000. But that uh, includes the El Nusra Front, which is somewhere between 10 and 20,000 operating in Syria. So those numbers uh, kind of take the, uh, the uh, general uh, vicinity of numbers down a little bit. So if they're suggesting, say, that if there's 40,000 Al-Qaeda in Iraq and Syria, then uh, they're obviously looking at a much lower number, but we're also not sure uh, how much they are discerning between Al-Qaeda and ISIS, um, or the Islamic State. Uh, but this monitoring group uh, said that uh, just, just in the month of August, uh, 6,000 new recruits uh, were brought in, including 1,000 foreigners. And they even uh, label uh, 200 defectors from the Al-Nusra Front. And once again, uh, these numbers of uh, 60, 70, 80, 100,000 seem feasible uh, in the extent that uh, we've had ISIS uh, operating in Iraq in, in this offensive for uh, the better part of uh, nine, nine months now, at least. And, uh, and they certainly have a history of going back before that in Syria. So the idea that they could be uh, amassing 
more and more fighters. Let's remember there's been these uh, huge prison breaks. Um, they've been on a, a huge recruiting binge on a global scale. And we have jihadis coming from places like Yemen and Libya. Um, so the, the, that could also add to the numbers. Um, and, and then the fact that they've become such a, a boutique brand, a boutique global brand, and are so hip now. I'm sure there's plenty of people in Hollywood uh, walking around with uh, ISIS and Islamic State uh, swag and t-shirts on now because uh, this has become so hip. And uh, so the recruitment between uh, the uh, uh, pressing into service of uh, uh, people from conquered territories and then volunteers that they pick up along the way. We've heard these stories of uh, villages where uh, they, they capture it with a, a hundred uh, soldiers and they, they end up with another hundred or another thousand uh, recruits. So the, this buildup of numbers could, could, be, uh, could, could be quick and uh, we could be looking at the kind of numbers they're, that they're, they're talking about, 80, 90, 100,000. And then if you also look at uh, just the, the uh, uh, nature of the battlefield, uh, once again, we would have to find uh, some substantial numbers of Islamic State fighters because uh, they're laying siege to Aleppo. Uh, they took the uh, air base of Raqqa with a large force. Uh, they took a, a, a base uh, a couple months ago in Homs in Syria, which I did a video about where uh, four to 500 uh, Syrians were, were slaughtered. So once again, that takes a fairly substantial force, um, you know, two, three, four or five thousand involved in some of these assaults and then they're taking on the Syrian government head on, the Syrian government forces head on. That takes a substantial number and then they're taking on the Kurds and the Iraqi government forces and Shia militias and uh, uh, in, in Iraq which also takes substantial forces and they're also uh, uh, expanded across a huge swath of territory which they are maintaining control of. That's one of the things that separates them from some of these other uh, militant uh, groups, these jihadi groups. Um, they are holding this ground that they take and uh, therefore they need uh, fighters in order to hold the ground they take. So taking all these things into consideration, uh, holding vast uh, uh, swaths of territory that they've conquered and having the capacity to do so, having the capacity to, to uh, launch these multiple uh, fronts, these multiple assaults and uh, offensives uh, all over Syria and all over Iraq. The, the fact that they uh, have a, an incredible uh, publicity machine that's generating uh, uh, thousands of new recruits uh, probably far more quickly than we can even imagine. And, and then we have jihadis from all over the region uh, flooding in and, and wanting to join in on uh, the Islamic State success. So all these factors uh, countered in uh, seems to, to make it likely that indeed uh, ISIS is a formidable uh, battlefield force um, that could have anywhere between 50 and 100,000 uh, fighters. Uh, either number is uh, pretty substantial and, and in that region could have a huge effect. And needless to say, uh, the uh, forces that are lining up now in this uh, new supposed U.S. coalition to combat ISIS is going to have its work cut out for it and uh, even as uh, the, the coalition inflicts these casualties uh, on the Islamic State uh, it seems like inevitably there will continue to be uh, more and more uh, recruits flocking to this region particularly if the US gets entangled there more and becomes a local target again so there we have it I just want to uh, uh, clear that up or, or at least have a dialogue about it and uh, look at what kind of numbers we're actually talking about as far as the Islamic State and uh, the numbers uh, seem to be uh, formidable. I'm a useful idiot, don't you be one too.